Why on earth did George Clooney get married a few years ago? Was it a good idea? What will happen with his marriage? Why did he change his mind? George Clooney is a very interesting case study and I will analyze. Alpha, Alpha Male 2.0. Freedom focused lifestyle design for men. We do five videos a week here on how to make both your business life and woman life more free because you need both. If you subscribe to this channel, leave a like on this video and leave a comment on this video, you will automatically be entered into the regular drawing for my online video course on how to create location independent income, normally $1,400. We regularly announce the winners at the community feed at this channel. George Clooney, as you probably all know, is one of the most famous men in the world. He is widely considered to be one of the best looking men in the world. He is ridiculously famous. He is ridiculously wealthy. He is worth several hundred millions of dollars, and today he is married. He's been married now for about six years. But what's interesting is, and what I'm about to say has to a, a decent degree been scrubbed from the internet, and it's fascinating that people forget this because it was such a big deal for so long. But George Clooney was one of the most, if not the most, anti-marriage mainstream celebrities in the world for most of the past several decades up until about 2014 when he got married. So famously he said, I'm never getting married. Marriage doesn't make any sense. I will never get married. There's no point. Why would I possibly get married? By the way, all the arguments he used were correct. As a matter of fact, he bet Michelle Pfeiffer $50,000 that if he ever got married, he would pay her 50 grand because Michelle Pfeiffer correctly said, oh, you'll get married. You'll get married someday. You say that now, but when you get older, you'll want to get married. And he said, nope, nope, nope. I'll never get married. I'll bet you $50,000. And he did. He talked about this often, how he would not get married. He talked about it in interviews. There were several movies he did where he actually gave little soliloquies about why getting married. My favorite one was from the, from the movie uh, Up in the Air where he's on a bus with the woman in the movie and he says, marriage, sell it to me. It's a really great scene. I suggest you watch it. Good movie, by the way. But anyway, he was vehemently anti-marriage. Not just, I don't think I want to get married. He was anti-marriage until 2014 when he married Amal Clooney. I don't remember her, uh, her actual maiden name. Uh, she is Lebanese, I believe. And he married a very dominant, very high-powered, very successful woman in her late 30s and the entire world was shocked, shocked and excited because a lot of this Hollywood gossipy stuff is really into the Disney fairy tale of getting married and all that stuff. So people were very happy and very excited, but a lot of people were very surprised at this complete 180 he did. And he did do a 180. George Clooney, for a very long time, I wrote an article about this at the time before he got married, was a hardcore serial monogamist, which is really interesting because most men hate serial monogamy. Women love serial monogamy. Serial monogamy, if you didn't know, that's where you date this person, and then you get bored, dump that person, then you date this person, then you get bored, dump that person, then you date this person, and you keep monkey branching to various people. So when you look back over your life, you've got, you know, 17, 18, 19, 27 relationships, serial monogamous relationships, one after the next. That's what George Clooney did. And he seemed to like it, which is, again, is unusual because most men don't like it. And one of the models that he would use is he has a beautiful home somewhere in Italy on the water, and one of the regular things he would do, it was a joke back then, is he would get a girlfriend, a monogamous, serious girlfriend. He would bring her to Italy with him for the summer. They'd spend the summer together as boyfriend and girlfriend. And when he went back to the States to get back to work, he would dump her and just do this again the next year with a, a constant stream of new women. Serial monogamy. He loved that stuff. So it's very interesting that finally he chucked all that to get married to Amal Clooney. Now, as I said at the time, and I'll say it again, he will get divorced. George Clooney will get divorced. George Clooney is a high-end alpha male. High-end alpha males either don't stay married or don't stay monogamous, usually both. And so I said at the time, I'll repeat now, he will get divorced. I said this in 2014 when he got married. I'm saying it now. He's been married now for, you know, what? About six years, maybe a little more than that. And this stuff is always very difficult to verify with the gossip and the press and the paparazzi but it's reasonably sourced from various different sources that George and Amal, big shock, are now having all kinds of problems in their marriage, and it is reasonably apparent, you never know for sure about these things, but it's reasonably apparent that last year in 2020, they actually had a trial separation for two months where they moved out or moved away from each other for two months to see what would happen and <laughs> to see if they could repair the marriage or what have you. And then now there's a new problem where George Clooney wants to move in his parents because of COVID and Amal is fucking pissed off 
Now, one thing about that is that if George Clooney had married a sweet, little, feminine, submissive wallflower, he would have had a shot at staying married for the rest of his life, very similar to what Sylvester Stallone did. Sylvester Stallone, after numerous failed marriages and numerous failed relationships, married a young woman. She was young back then. Today, she's, I believe, in her 50s. This was a more submissive, not an ass-kicker type woman, and Sylvester Stallone's been married now for 20 years. They're not monogamous. This woman knows they're not monogamous. She's like, I'm not naive about what he does when I'm not around. Maybe I'll do a video on his marriage. But anyway, the point is, Sylvester Stallone, unlike George Clooney, actually has a shot at staying married for the rest of his life, whereas George Clooney has no shot. George Clooney will get divorced. As I've talked about, there are three kinds of women. There are dominants, submissives, and independents, and he married a dominant. And he is also an alpha male. Alpha males and dominants don't mix very well in terms of long-term serious relationships. They work together very well. I work very well with dominant women. I love working with dominant women. I have friends who are dominant women. I've had FBs who are dominant women, but I could never be in a serious relationship with a dominant woman because they're fundamentally incompatible. So George Clooney unfortunately married someone who he was fundamentally incompatible with long-term. That's why he will get divorced. Now as to when he will get divorced, I have no idea. No one can predict this. Who the hell knows? There's no way to know that. I just know he's going to get divorced. And what's really interesting about this, and I talked about this at the time when he got married, is that he doesn't care. What? Of course he cares. How can you say he doesn't care if he gets divorced? He probably loves this woman. Yes, he cares. But he doesn't care if he gets divorced like you and I would care. Number one, I would bet good money that George Clooney has a pretty decent prenuptial agreement. Now, as I've said before, prenuptial agreement, or whatever the equivalent is, because usually it's not called a prenuptial agreement, does not mean woman gets nothing. The prenuptial paperwork specifies what the woman does get. So I'm not saying if they got divorced, Amal would get literally nothing. She probably would get something from him, but he wouldn't care because George Clooney is George Clooney. George Clooney is worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Even if he didn't have a prenup, he still probably wouldn't care because when you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars, your lifestyle is on a level that's a little different from what you or I will be accustomed to. For example, I personally know someone, I know this person very well, who many years ago when this happened had a net worth of just over $100 million. And he divorced his wife, who he had been married to for a very long time, mother of his children. And when she said, I'm going to take half your money, he basically whipped out his checkbook and said, okay. And he wrote her out a check for $50 million and handed it to her. And it was no big deal to him. And when I talked to him about this, he said, Caleb, I don't care. What difference does it make in my life? I don't notice any difference in my lifestyle. Just some numbers on a piece of paper have changed. Exactly. When you are ridiculously wealthy and you get divorced, even if you get divorced without a prenup, all that happens is that some numbers change on a document somewhere, but your lifestyle doesn't change. When Jeff Bezos got divorced, same deal there. He probably didn't give a shit. Now, emotionally, he probably cared. But in terms of what you or I would be concerned about if you or I got divorced, that'd be on a completely different level. Chris Rock had an old joke about this. By the way, Chris Rock, who recently got divorced himself after defending his marriage multiple times, he had an old joke about how if a guy's married and he makes a million dollars a year and then he gets divorced and now he only makes 500,000 a year, who cares? Now, he might care a little bit, but for comparison, he said, okay, imagine the guy who makes 30,000 a year and now he's going through a divorce, so now he's gonna make 15,000 a year. And his old joke was, I gotta move back home with mama because you ain't in love, you gonna have to die. Right. So when you don't have hundreds of millions of dollars, divorce hurts a lot. If you have a net worth of about a million bucks, let's say, and you lose half that money, it's the end of the world. You're ready to kill yourself. That's really bad news. But if you have 100 million and you lose 50 million, or in George Clooney's case, you have 500 million and you lose 200 million, you're like, okay, that sucks. But it's a whole different scenario in terms of your lifestyle, your financial future, and things like that. So on some level, and I can't read anyone's mind, I don't know this for sure, but on some level, people like George Clooney, high-end nine-figure or 10-figure multimillionaires or billionaires, men who are ultra famous, when they get married, the fear of getting divorced is a lot less than if you or I were to get married, particularly if you or I were to get married without a prenuptial agreement, which is insane in the modern era. I don't think he did that. But my point is, in terms of him giving a shit about getting divorced, he doesn't give a shit the way you and I would give a shit. People underestimate how much money he really has. George Clooney actually at one point gave 14 of his friends a million dollars cash each just to say thank you. He's got a lot of money. 
So he'll be in that category if he did get divorced and he's got to write this massive check to her. He'd be like, all right, sure, here you go. It doesn't change his life. He's still George Clooney. He's still worth gazillions of dollars. He's still famous. He's still good looking. He can replace the woman whenever he wants. So it's a whole different deal. So yes, he will get divorced, but he doesn't care as much as you and I would think. If you would like more help on determining and structuring a long-term happy relationship for you, especially you older guys, for an OLTR type marriage or something like that, you can go to joinsmic.com. That is my audio training and mentorship program. Or if you like, you can click this video here where I talk about whether or not Will Smith is a beta, or you can click this video here on how to structure prenuptial paperwork. I will see you in the next video. Bye.